All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. Today, we're going to talk about E85 and what it is and why you want it, why you care. Um, in my town, I'm in Michigan, I can easily get E85. There's actually a refinery right down the road we'll go visit here in a moment, or I can also get race fuel. Um, that's at my local station. It is $8 a gallon for 110 and 460 a gallon for 90 if you just really need that wreck fuel Freedom fuel, no ethanol in my gasoline, straight out of South Dakota, fracking for freedom. Uh, in your lawnmower, you know, you can get that for 460 a gallon. Or like I said, you can get the 110 for eight bucks a gallon. So uh, let's go look at E85. I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so a few minutes down the road, you can see that E85 has 100 <laughs> coconut. 102 octane for 259 or 260 a gallon. It's literally three and a half times cheaper than 110 race fuel. So let's head back to the shop and talk about some things that you need to know and some things that you may already know and some things that you may not already know. Okay, so now that we've established that E85 is, you know, three and a half times cheaper for 95% of the octane. Let's take a minute and talk about octane in the first place. Um, some of you don't know this, probably if you're watching this video, you, you do. And, you know, I'm just going to go over it anyway. Octane rating, octane is a fuel's ability to resist burning. Okay. So 85 octane gas, which is what they get in Colorado and high altitude places, um, burns more easily than 91 or 93 or 97, wherever you're at, depends on what you can get. Putting higher octane fuel in your car does not make it go faster, especially if you have like that stupid Dodge Avenger sitting out there, right? That thing has no capability to adjust timing or anything based on octane. It doesn't know. It's dumb. Um, and actually, Daryl, it's also dumb. It doesn't know. It's just going to run whatever I tell it to. So even with this turbo, I can run 87. I just turn the boost down and turn the timing way down, and it would be a dog. And, you know, especially uh, like right now, it's running like 26, 27 degrees of timing without the turbo, um, the, the fuel or the timing curve that's in it. Um and that's on 87. It's been tuned to run on 87, and, that, and that's what I run it on. Uh, I wouldn't, so just putting E85 in here wouldn't make it run better. Uh, I'd have to crank up the timing. And on an NA motor, you're really not going to get much out of it. But once you add boost or nitrous um, into the equation, then it becomes a different ball game. So being able to run, you know, instead of six, seven pounds of boost, maybe 13, 14 pounds of boost for less money is a BFD, right? And to further my point, nitromethane, right, is negative 1,000 octane. Did you know that? If you took pure nitromethane, that's not pure nitromethane, it's cut with methanol. You know why? Because it brings the octane rating back up. So it doesn't explode. If you put pure nitromethane on this plate and hit it with a hammer, it would explode. Um, and that's why top fuel cars run it. And that's why they rebuild after every single race. So, E85 is a way better bargain than 110. Now, another point to remember is that E85 is 30% less efficient than regular gasoline, which would be 91, 93, whatever you're talking about. It takes 30% more of it, 30% more alcohol by volume to make the same amount of energy as ga a gallon of gasoline. That means that you're, you just need to factor that in, right? If you're like, this turbo doesn't need 110 pound or 100 pound injectors, it needs like 60s. But on E85, 60s won't be enough because they'll be the equivalent of like 42s. So 80s would be enough. You just need to take that into account. Um, I'm still running dash six fuel lines, feed and return. I'm going to keep doing that. I, my injectors are oversized anyway, not a big deal. Um, but just bear that in mind. There's no real MPG saving. You wind up like if I put this, my wife's Jeep is flex fuel capable. If I put e, uh, E85 in it, it gets like 30% worse mileage and you know, 
It depends on where the price is at because they kind of yo-yo up and down. Sometimes I win with E85 in it, sometimes I don't. Um, but this will have E85 in it all the time from now on. And again, the reason for that is it gives you a much, it's more resistant to burning, right? It's not going to knock. If this thing knocks, it's done. It's over. There, there can be no spark knock at 10 PSI. You, all your ring lands are going to yeet themselves right down in the oil pan, which is what happens to guys with hollies that don't set their base tune up right all the time. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's about what you need to know. You can just dump it right in your tank. If you want, you can, if you're going to really run dedicated E85 all the time, you don't need to bother with a content sensor or anything else. Uh, I take this truck on trips and stuff, so I may not be able to get E85 everywhere I go. And then there's a dual fuel in there. When we get to the tuning portion, you'll see what I'm talking about. But that's kind of the point of this video to set you up for the, the tuning video so you can see why I go through a little bit of gymnastics to get the tune that I want here. Um, but yeah, there, I mean, I don't even remember what the price was, 260 a gallon or whatever. You're not going to get a better fuel. Um, it does, it can degrade rubber lines. I don't have any rubber lines. Mine are all PTFE. If you get PTFE, uh, line hose, it'll be fine. Um, what's one of the other things people believe? It will gum your shit up eventually. Uh, I have a snowblower that I don't do anything with it. E, the normal gas that comes out of your pump is E10. Um, when you go buy 87 for your lawnmower or your car or whatever, your daily, it's E10. So it does affect the tune and stuff like that a little bit. Um, what else? Yeah, PTFE lines. You're good to go. You don't need to do anything special with injectors. The reason why flex injectors are called flex injectors is because they flow 30% more so that you can get you know, that, that extra fuel when you need it in your stock stupid Tahoe or whatever. But anyway, um, that's the story of E85. That's why I'm going to use it. It's, you know, 105 octane out of the pump. I think they rate mine locally at 102 or whatever. That's the other thing you need to know. E85 is not consistent. It can vary by law. You can pump E50 or E90 or anywhere in between. And by law, it's still able to be called E85. Um, so that's one reason to go with a content sensor and, and just make sure that what you're getting is what you're getting. Or if you're really serious and you're dedicated, like I have a refinery locally, I can go buy a 55 gallon drum and mix my own. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put the content sensor in and rely on it to be correct, but you can do that. That's an option. So hopefully that clears up why I'm bothering with E85 or why you might want to bother with E85 or not. You know, I don't know. I don't know you, but uh, it's, a, it's a quite a bargain. And, and if you leave politics out of it, I don't care which political party uh, enrich themselves off subsidizing it or whatever. We got to get us little people got to get in where we can. Right. And this is a way that we can profit off of the government being corrupt and crooked and doing silly shit to enrich themselves and their friends. So E85, corn squeezins, corn liquor, woo wee, white lightning. Oh, that's the other thing I was gonna tell you guys about. If you have a still or you want a still or you think you're going to distill, um, in Michigan it's not legal to distill alcohol for your personal use for any reason whatsoever. So I would never, and I have a still that I've only ever used to make distilled water in because water is delicious and I love it. But if you think you're going to make your own E85 with a still, you're not because you can't get all the water out of it. Uh, what comes out of a very, very good still is 180, 185 proof. If you're really, really good, I, you can crank it up to 190, I guess. I've never seen personally when I was in some state other than Michigan a proof higher than 170 or so. But... uh It'll still have that, that, that remaining 200 proof is straight alcohol. So that remaining, you know, 30%, 15% is, uh, is water. And so you can kind of get away with running it. You, you know, you've seen the videos of people running their small engines on, on liquor or whatever, but to really get it pure, you need some lab equipment and stuff to get all the water out of it. So that's it. Um, I'm really just waiting on not much stuff 
I'm actually waiting on people to buy some stuff. It's like slow time. I'm broke. So, um, but yeah, we'll continue working on the turbo truck this week. And if you have any other questions about E85 or Octane or whatever, let me know down below. Otherwise, we'll be going into them shortly um, when I do the PCM video. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time on The Driveway Engineer.